Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and you know what? I, I, th I thought it was time to take a look at the Nintendo Switch and something that it does very, very well. You know, I, I really think the Switch does a lot of things well, all things considered, but especially when it comes to JRPGs. There are just so many great RPGs available on this console. I mean, it, it is crazy to think about, but I, I, I think I think it's kind of gotten to the point of it really being in the conversation of maybe, just maybe being in that conversation of the best consoles ever for fans of this genre. Now, with that said, that, that does kind of beg the question, though. With there being just so much choice available to consumers, where do you start? And that, that that's where this video comes in. My goal here was really to kind of make this a one-stop shop for fans of the genre, or for people just now jumping in. So today, we're going to take a look at, in my opinion, the top 25 JRPGs that you need to play on the Switch. Now, this will range from turn-based games to action and even your more tactical-based games or, or just games that play like JRPGs. There's a lot of variety here, but without further ado, let's just go and jump right into this. So to start off this list, I have a brand new game that actually just released, so my mind still might change on this one. But I wanted to go ahead and include it because the Dealfield Chronicle really is an interesting game. It's almost like Final Fantasy Tactics meets a game like Pillars of Eternity as an example. It's really its own thing in terms of tactical JRPGs, but if you are looking for something just a little bit different with engrossing combat, go ahead and give the Deal Filled Chronicle a try. I also really like its simplistic but attractive art style. Now, next up here, I have an oldie but a goodie being Grandia 1 and Grandia 2 HD. Grandia did originally release way back on the PlayStation 1, but it's remarkable how well this game holds up all these years later, thanks in part because of its vibrant art style. Its combat also, I think, was unique for its time, and I think it still holds up, and plus, it does have a fun cast of characters that can easily be described as nothing short of charming, and that goes doubly for its story as well. It's about this group of friends that race in evil to uncover an ancient civilization, and and again, just all these years later, I think it holds up well, whether you've played it already or if it's your first time ever. Now, for those that like a little bit more action in their games, here I have Trials of Mana, which is a remake of the classic 1995 title that released only in Japan. Trials, though, has been making a bit of a comeback, though, as you can play its collection on the Switch, which, by the way, I recommend that as well. And then this remake here. This game is rather interesting, though, in how it works. It does have a fun high fantasy world and combat, but its story is kind of fed to you through multiple playthroughs. From the get-go, you'll be able to choose three of six characters, and depending on who you choose, that will decide the story and sub-stories that you'll get during that playthrough. So Trials of Mana does encourage multiple playthroughs to see everything the story has to offer, but thankfully, thankfully, it is fun with plenty of variety in characters. Okay, so this next one here, Digimon Survive, admittedly is a tell of two, because it, its clear main focus is obviously on the story, which plays out like a visual novel. So I do want to be very direct about that, but it does also have tactical RPG gameplay, which is why I'm including it on this list. And I think that its combat is rather solid. You can put your own team together and then choose your own evolution path for each individual Digimon. Now, I, however, will say that the combat is a little basic on normal difficulty. I don't think that it really offers much in the way of a challenge. So if you do want a more difficult game, you might want to up its difficulty. But still, even then, I, I still think that it's a fun overall experience, and especially if you like the Digimon series and its animation. Anime as I do. I did grow up with the Digimon series, so I have an attachment to this franchise, and, and I do think the story of Survive ranks right up there with some of the best, like Season 3. It is very dark though, and that might surprise some people, but definitely, definitely a great story. Speaking of visual novels, though, we might as well just go ahead and get 13 Sentinels out of the way as well. Again, kind of like Digimon Survive, I, I'm sure a lot of people will kind of argue that this game shouldn't even be on this list, as it is mostly a visual novel, but because it is such a good game, and because it does have some tactical RPG battles, I mean, I just had to include this game. My goal on this channel is always to showcase good games, and at the very least, 13 Sentinels is exactly that. Now, with that said, 13 Sentinels has a beautiful art style, and it just pops off the Switch's screen. The tactical battles, while not necessarily overly complex, it still gets the job done, and then it has one of the better stories in video games, just period. If anything, if you like stories, if you like anime, and if you like time travel, then, well, you should probably play 13 Sentinels. 
So one JRPG series that's always really stood out to me and I think does feel really good on handheld is The Legend of Heroes. I'd actually like to put these higher on the list as they, they are very good turn-based classic style RPGs. They do have good characters and they have good world building. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the entirety of the series is not available on the Switch and the story is interconnected. So, so that is a problem here. However, if you've already played some of its previous games, Trials of Cold Steel 3 and 4 are available on the Switch and now you also have Trials of Zero that is on its way as well. Probably one of my favorite trends in gaming right now is HD 2D games, and that trend is really all thanks to Octopath Traveler. This is such a beautiful game, modernizing timeless pixel art and then bringing back that classic feel of 90s JRPGs like Final Fantasy VI. The twist here though is that in Octopath, it actually focuses on eight different characters which all have their own personal stories. Now I would have liked to have seen the characters interact with each other a little bit more, and, and that's really my main complaint when it comes to this game, but even then I still think that this is a good game, especially when it comes to its turn-based combat. However, I, I do hope that they've learned from this game and make its sequel even better, which is set to release sometime next year in 2023. Now here, I have the long-running Shin Megami Tensei series as the Switch has both SMT3 as well as the newest entry being SMT5. Now the thing about this specific series though is that in terms of its turn-based combat, you're really not going to get much better than SMT. There's a lot of personal customization as you build your own team of demons, and it, it can also offer a real challenge. So if that's what you're looking for, and if you like dungeon crawling, then you're probably going to absolutely love Shin Megami Tensei, as I'd say it's a masterclass in that aspect. However, in terms of story, they are a little bit more philosophical and not necessarily for everybody. So that is something to kind of keep in mind here if you're looking for more of a good story-driven game. Now coming in next, Nino Kuni is just an absolutely beautiful game, sporting that Studio Ghibli art style. And even though this game released back in 2010 for the PlayStation 3, I mean, it still looks absolutely amazing to this day, which really is a testament to its art style. This is a very heartfelt game though that'll pretty much connect with you right from the get-go. You'll feel for the characters almost immediately, and then you're just sucked into its magical world. Honestly, I don't think that there's really a better word to describe this game. It's just this magical adventure, but it also has good solid combat. You do build a team of monsters, kind of similar to Pokemon. They do evolve and everything, but instead you fight along side them in more of this real-time combat. It's an overall fun mix though. Now going back to those HD 2D games, Team Asano did it once again with Triangle Strategy. This time though, instead of it being inspired by old school turn-based games, you have a tactical RPG and, and really a good one at that. It does have an enjoyable story with branching story paths and, and actually it can branch off within each branch. This works through like this conviction system and if you do like that more personalized story, then Triangle Strategy does it pretty well. It also helps that its characters and their motivation are well done and I, I again I just think that it has an overall enjoyable story now as for its combat though it's about what you'd come to expect from a tactical RPG where you use a, a grid based system and take advantage of its terrain but thanks to its characters and the vast amount of unique abilities each have you can really play around to find which strategy suits you best now next here, and this is something that you do see in the Switch a lot, I do have another remaster being Tales of Vesperia. This is actually one of my favorites from a story perspective though. I absolutely adore the characters within this game, their, their motivations, and just their overall chemistry with one another. They do play off each other very, very well, and, and I think for that reason alone, I'd recommend this game, but I also do think that the gameplay has a lot to offer. It does have that overworld that you often see when it comes to old school JRPGs, there's dungeons to explore, and its real-time combat is fun if not necessarily overly complex. I mean, yes, this is an older game, but it's aged incredibly well thanks to its art style. And again, if you like story-driven games as I very much do, then I think Tales of Asperia is an absolute must-play, no doubt about it. So I think by this point in the video, one thing that you're starting to notice is that Team Asano have just been knocking it out of the park when it comes to these HD 2D games, and that continues on with Live Alive HD. Now this here is actually a remake, but it is the first time it's released outside of Japan, so it's actually a completely new game for most people out there. 
How this game works though is that you have these various characters from different eras in history that, that all have their own stories and just unique styles of gameplay. They're all completely unique. In one timeline you might play as a cowboy and then in another you might play as this more stealth based ninja. They're, they're all very interesting though in their own way and their stories they do tie together nicely as well. This is just such a unique game though that not only stands the test of time, but once again, it just proves just how gorgeous these HD 2D games are and exactly why they're a brilliant way to revive these old classic games. If anything, we need even more of these revivals in the future. Okay, so this next one here technically is an action RPG developed in Japan, which is why it's on this list. But all in all, it's pretty much made its own genre by this point. And of course, I'm talking about none other than Dark Souls. This series really is like nothing else. But what's so amazing here is that Dark Souls can now be played on a handheld console like the Nintendo Switch. Sure, it's not as graphically impressive as some other versions out there, but the challenging, just flat out amazing combat is still there. The brilliant boss encounters are still just as brutally brilliant as ever. And if you've never played this series before, and if you like a challenge, really, you owe yourself a favor here. There's a reason that Dark Souls has inspired so many games out there. Its gameplay, its atmosphere, its world, and its enemy designs are just that good. And really, that's not an exaggeration either. I, I'd, I'd really put all of the From Software games in a class of their own. Now here I have Fire Emblem Three Houses. We do have Engage coming soon as well, so do keep an eye on that one. But here for Three Houses, it combines its beloved tactical gameplay with more of a social sim. You do have the choice of leading one of three houses, hence the name of the game, and with each house, they do have their own cast of characters and different stories. So this here is a massive game in terms of content, and, and there's really just so much to do when it comes to Three Houses. In between battles, because you're an instructor, you'll get to explore its campus, help your class grow, and then spend your time with individuals and just learn about their overall backgrounds. I do think that it has a likable cast of characters as well, so I mean, if you like those social elements, then I mean, Three Houses has a lot to offer, but its main draw is still absolutely its tactical-based combat, and that's where it really is just top of its class. All in all, though, there's really just so much replay value when it comes to Three Houses. Okay, so here I have two different Monster Hunter games that play vastly different. You do have Monster Hunter Rise, this is the more popular of the two, which is a more of this action RPG where you go off and, well, hunt monsters, you know, that's the name of the game. Capcom, though, they did just such an incredible job at bringing its world and its monsters to life, though, and depending on the hunt, it's always going to play different. That depends on your build, as each weapon in this game is unique, each monster, they had their own behavior, and there's a lot of depth when it comes to its combat. This game can really just sink its claws into you with its addictive gameplay and how you build out your character. Don't be surprised if you play 100 plus hours easily. But if you want more of a turn-based RPG, well, interestingly enough, you can also check out Monster Hunter Stories 2. This game here actually plays kind of similar to the Pokemon franchise, but instead you befriend monsters from the Monster Hunter series. It sounds like a weird combination, but it actually works surprisingly well, and if you've never played the mainline series before, you can still find enjoyment when it comes to Stories 2. Okay, so now we're really starting to get into some of my favorites that's released for the Switch this generation, and that starts with Astral Chain. Now, this is an action game developed by Platinum Games that, in my opinion, completely, completely utilizes its neon art style to set itself apart on the Switch. To this day, I, I do think that this is one of the better looking Switch titles out there, but the thing is, it also plays just as remarkably well. You have control of these different alien-like creatures via chains that you'll unlock as you progress through the game. They all have their own combat style that you can switch on the fly, and it's just so seamless in the way it works. Once you start to get the hang of it, it, it just feels so good. You can also use them to solve various puzzles as well, and that does make for a more enjoyable exploration that also mixes up its gameplay. And then to just top everything off, it actually does have a good story. I'd say really my only complaint when it comes to Astral Chain is that you do play as a silent protagonist, and I feel like if it was voiced, it's already good story could have been even better. So Nintendo's kind of weird. I, I mean, they've always kind of marched to their own beat and everything, but for whatever reason, they just refuse to bring back Paper Mario with its classic turn-based combat, despite, despite fans just pleading for them to go back to its roots. 
Well, luckily though, we now do have Bug Fables, which I'd say is not only a good spiritual successor to games like A Thousand Year Door, but it really stands tall on its own. Yes, it's familiar, it does have interactive turn-based battles, it has puzzle-based elements in its exploration, and it even has a similar badge-based system to build out your own characters. Where this game really surprised me though is that its story and its characters are very well done. I was very attached to the characters and stories, and, and honestly, if you're up for a challenge, set it to hard because it really shows off its depth in a way that pleasantly surprised me. Again, this isn't just a simple, good, spiritual successor, but I think just like those classic Paper Mario games, I'm going to look back on Bug Fables 20 years from now and think just how good this game actually is. Now, in terms of turn-based combat, the Bravely Default series has always really stood out to me, and it's why it's one of my favorites on this list. This is where this game, Bravely Default 2, just really specializes in, as each character can be customized by combining different jobs. And the amount of builds that you can create in this game is just absolutely insane. Then the synergy of each build, that plays an importance here, alongside how you actually strategize in each battle. The way it works is that you can choose to Brave or Default. In other words, you can default, which puts you on a defense while banking an attack. If you want to brave, though, well, then you can use those stored attacks to use in repeated succession. There's a ton of strategy that you're going to need to use in that moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and you're going to need to dive into that because there's, there's a real challenge in this game that completely, completely utilizes its mechanics. So I think with a lot of RPGs, the idea is experimentation, but it's Bravely Default's combat and its job system that truly, truly realizes that quote-unquote experimentation. It is so saddening to me that we've now gotten to The World Ends With You games, and with both of those games, they've been widely overlooked, and that really just should not be the case. The first game was already good, and I, I'd recommend that one as well, but I actually enjoyed its sequel, Neo The World Ends With You, even more. I do love this game, its story, its art style, and its characters. So you basically play as this character that gets swept into this parallel world where he and his team has to compete in the Reapers game. Each day you'll receive a different task and you'll need to complete it before the other teams because at the end of the week, the team with the fewest points will be executed. Its story is just so captivating though with a mystery that keeps you guessing as you and your partners try to find a way to escape its world. I, I really just enjoy this character so much, probably one of my favorite cast of characters and just all of the twists and turns along the way. As for its gameplay, it is action based where you control your team through your face buttons and then your shoulder buttons and it is different but it is fun and meshes well with its stylized art style. So next up here I have Amori, which is like nothing else on this list. It is a turn-based RPG, so in that way it's not like vastly different, but it is also a psychological horror with a deep and dark story. Do you think it's important that you understand that it deals with deep and dark subjects? It might surprise you, but by the end, it's wow. I mean, you'll think about its ending and just everything that happened long after you finish it. What I will say though, is that it has an amazing cast of characters that really synergize well as you go back and forth between this dreamlike world as a child and then the present day time. Its turn-based combat though is also I think unique and interesting. It's pretty standard for the most part, but you can also use emotions to, to give you and your team different buffs and kind of change their typing as you will. I, I really cannot recommend this game enough though. It honestly, I, I mean, it honestly did blow my mind when I first finished this game, but its journey, I, I'd say, is equally as good. Now to round off the top five, I have Dragon Quest XI, which is a modern turn-based RPG that really feels like it came straight from the 90s, and I do say that in the best way possible. There's a reason that so many of the all-time great JRPGs came from that era, but Dragon Quest XI, I mean, it has everything that you're looking for when it comes to a game like this. You set off on a grand adventure, it's got a timeless art style, a colorful cast of characters, fun overall turn-based combat, great exploration, and then, just to kind of wrap it all together, it's also got an emotionally driven story. If there was any game on this list that I could just kind of say, it's an instant classic. Well, here it is, Dragon Quest XI. Okay, so up next here, you all know it had to eventually be on this list, the massively popular Pokemon. And the Switch, well, it has a lot of different options here. You have Pokemon Let's Go, there's Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Sword and Shield, Scarlet and Violet is coming sometime soon. But then, the one that really caught me by surprise, Legends Arceus. Now, I will say that if you're into competitive 
you'll need to stick with the mainline series here. And even though their stories are a walk in the park, if you play competitive, then Pokemon has a lot of depth with its teams, their natures, and held items. A lot of people don't actually realize how in-depth Pokemon can actually be, but when it comes to competitive, it takes a lot of strategy. So definitely check out all that, but if you're looking for more of the single player side of things, Legends Arceus is actually surprisingly really good. Now, I'm actually a huge fan of the Pokemon series, but I was originally skeptical when it came to Legends Arceus. You know, this is a very different title, but, but when all said and done, this game really won me over. The story is actually interesting, with it being an origin story where Pokemon aren't just your friends. The open areas are fun to explore and it makes catching Pokemon seamless and addictive. And then, when it comes to battles, they work a little bit different in this game, but they are actually challenging. The only issue is that there's not really enough trainer battles to really capitalize on that to its fullest, but when it does, it shines incredibly bright. Not only will Pokemon fans love this game, but I think even fans outside of the Pokemon series should definitely give this one a try because it really does stand out. Now, Nintendo is known for various high-quality franchises, whether that be Zelda, you have Mario, there's Metroid, there's Donkey Kong, and, and the list just kind of goes on and on and on. But let me tell you, Xenoblade in terms of quality is right up there among Nintendo's best work. And the really cool thing here is that you can play all the mainline entries on the Nintendo Switch. That includes Xenoblade 1, Xenoblade 2, its expansion story, Torn of the Golden Country, and then its newest entry, which just continues its upward trajectory and how good it is, Xenoblade 3. Now, you can play any of the numbered entries in whatever order you want, as they do have standalone stories and their own cast of characters. Really, you can't go wrong with any of the three. They all have great stories and they all have great characters. But I will say that Xenoblade 3 is a big step up in terms of its combat. Not only does it have that amazing story and that lovable cast of characters, but I think that they really figured out how to take its combat to the next level. Its combat is kind of hard to explain though. It, it's kind of like this real-time combat with abilities that are on cooldown. You can do some team combos and things like that, but really, the Xenoblade series really is just becoming an all-time great JRPG franchise. Actually, you know what? I, I take that back. It's already in that category. All right, so I, I went ahead and kind of cheated here. Technically, as of the making of this video, Persona is not available on the Switch. However, Persona 3, 4, and 5 Royal are all coming over to the Nintendo Switch sometime here soon. And I have actually played all three of these games. So as long as the performance on the Switch is as intended, then you all are in for a real treat here. Now, I will say, even though Persona 5 Royal is the most popular entry here, Persona 4 Golden is actually my favorite among the three, in large part because of how well the characters interact with each other. They have such good chemistry together that really lends itself to its overall mysterious plot that has some fun and unexpected twists along the way. Regardless, though, much like the Xenoblade franchise, you, you really can't go wrong with any of these games. They're all top-tier turn-based RPGs that also helped popularize that social element where you manage time outside of its dungeon crawling. What that means for Persona is that you'll have plenty of time to partake in everyday school life, and then you'll also get a bond with the characters in its universe, all of which wraps into one of the most memorable JRP series ever made. And at the number one spot, I have none other than, as you guessed it, Final Fantasy. I mean, really, the top three on this list could have easily been swapped with one another. I, they all rank really close together. They're, they're all phenomenal. But there is something very, very special about the Final Fantasy series. It's actually quite amazing to me just how well these games have actually aged. And the thing about that is, is that I played most of these games in my adult life. I did not play these games back in the 90s when they originally released. So... It, my opinion is not just blanketed with this blind nostalgia. They have just these timeless stories and worlds, and their gameplay, they, they hold up all these years later. Now, with that said, there's always that question of which one is the best, and honestly, I don't think that there's really a correct answer here. Each entry has its own fans, because most of them are good in their own way. But what I can do here is tell you my own personal favorites. My two favorites are Final Fantasy VII, and then Final Fantasy VIII. Seven is a little bit more universally loved, so that one might be the go-to here, where eight can be a little bit more polarizing. It's got a different style of combat, and, and, and your main character can be kind of a jerk, but ultimately, I, I you know, I, I still liked it. It's a great love story, and you know, either way, 
Both of those are my two favorites. Nine, though, that's another awesome game. Same thing with 10 and 11. And again, you, you, you really just can't go wrong with any of these games. There's a reason that Final Fantasy has inspired just such a large portion of JRPGs in general. They just have some of the most memorable characters, most memorable stories and worlds, and then again, that timeless, just timeless gameplay. Anyways, though, that's it for this list, and even though this was technically a top 25 list, if you include series, we, we easily, easily eclipse 30 games, so hopefully you found something here that you'll like. Nonetheless, though, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.